Hello, tower climbing tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play um, Pools of Darkness. Yeah, with me, Blankulo. So I had to stop my climb up. We're on floor five, I think. Whichever one is that has the big room in the middle. And I was just exploring a little bit more thoroughly in between episodes. Um, just, just in case I missed something, because I missed something. The dome of this great room is midnight in color. Blacker still is a hand over most of the sky. As you regard it, eyes of flame begin to flutter like hellish stars. A red eye opens in the hand's palm, sign of a union of Bane and Moander. The chill of eternal night enters you. So I've, you know, I tested it accidentally, but there's nothing you can say, so just, just move. And we're going to take a little bit of damage. A tiny little bit of damage. It's just an icy bite. Nothing, nothing to stress out about. You find a fellow hero. Too late. You compose the body. Oh, we close his eyes and make him look respectful. And steal all of his gear. Yeah, that's the main thing. You steal all his gear. I really don't care about javelins, so I'm not even going to look at them. It's a pretty good two-handed sword. I mean... It's hard to compete with a shield plus five, but if we ever need a two-handed sword, we've got one now. I don't know when I would ever switch, but at least that's an, uh, that's an option. All right. So yeah, I, I mean, I figured we'd just come back a little bit early like this. Otherwise, nothing has happened on my journey up. We're a little bit over halfway through, and I figured close enough. Uh, I am just sort of filling in some of the map bits for fun. I've had very few encounters, honestly. Um, I guess I was on level 6, by the way. Um, I guess it's possible, you know, you'll, you'll get random encounters now and then. But it's pretty, pretty mild. Also, one thing that started happening is if I use blue on quick battle, um, he just casts fireballs automatically on, our, on, the, on the, the auto battle. Which is not good, so I have to not I have to control him manually, basically. I blame Shell. Alright, but we'll just crush through some of these spiders quick. Alright, that's barely worth your time. So we gotta go... Where's the way out? Did you have to go all the way around? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm on this floor now. This was one of those long floors you had to go all the way around. Yeah. Okay, good. Floor 8. I think this is where we got stumped last time. Because there was a door that wouldn't open. And now that we've got Shall, um, theoretically things are going to be fine. Oh, by the way, these red mages can cast Disintegrate. So, like, seriously, don't mess around with them. Uh, they didn't kill anybody off camera, but um, it's a pretty bad idea to let them start casting magic. So, you know, good old stinking clouds, stuff like that. Whatever interrupts them. I don't think the assassins are anything to worry about, though. There we go. Double whammy. Oh. Well. Alright, Shell's not doing anything lately. Shell will need some better equipment for her to really, uh, sort of carry her weight. Uh, I did not interrupt that one. I missed it. I can't quick myself. It's a bad idea. No, no, no. Chinga, deal with it. Alright, good. No disintegrations allowed. No disintegrators, I say. No disintegration? I think that's the word. 
Oh. Whatever. Look. No, just quick battle right back to melee. There you go. Save me the ch time of re-equipping. Alright. So yeah, not super trouble problematic, but um, you know, if you let them disintegrate, someone's gonna lose all their gear and you're gonna be really upset, so... Keep an eye on that, basically. Up and up and up. Uh... Oh, these guys again. Okay, so the last time we entered this room, this happened the same. So it looks like you have to fight this every time you come through. Uh, and I have lightning bolts ready. Good, good. Okay, like I said, just be careful with some of these uh, red mages. And I think we'll throw a fireball, even a delayed blast, just to speed this up a little bit. I'd like to get to some new content today. Maybe save Flan, I don't know. I feel like almost it may have been worth... Like, if you're playing along and you haven't gone to the web dimension yet, it might have been worth worth it to come here first, actually. Like, I, I don't know. Um, This dungeon seems, so far, seems a lot easier than going to the web dimension. I mean, it might not hold off... It might not last for that long, but... At least as of now... Compared to fighting Drow and Pets of Callistes, I guess the Red Mages have Disintegrate, but they're easy to interrupt, and the Pet of Callistes had like 85% magic of if, magic resistance, so considerably different sort of standards. Um, oh, I must have used his Magic Missile. Oh, right, I switched it to like Shield and Enlarge. He used to have a Magic Missile. Oh, perfect. Wait, oh! Who's casting? I thought one of the enemies was casting magic. Maybe it was the one he killed, the priest he killed automatically. I wasn't even thinking. I thought there was a mage back there somewhere. Alright, evil champion, not so strong. Done. Alright, now that Shal is here, right? The wizard gate slams behind you. Alright. Do we have any equipment? You know what? I've already got one of these for everybody. I'm not gonna just sell it. Shal can have it. I know it's gone forever, but like, we really don't need that. Similarly, I could send her some of this stuff. I forgot that we, uh, I could probably equip her a bit better. She is a fighter, so she can equip, like, anything. I'm not giving her that ring, though. That ring of protection. Um, she could have a plus one helmet. Just, you know, a couple... She could have a shield plus three. Why not? I've got no use for it anymore. So that'll make her a lot better. Well, I'm not sure if the plate... She might not have needed the armor, but... Uh, so armor class negative three... Armor class, negative six. Okay, she's got some really good plate mail there, actually. That's got to be like plus four or five plate. Um, so, you know, that'd be pretty awesome if we had some of that. Uh, so her Thacko's good. Her damage could be a lot better with a real weapon. So if I find another... I want her to have her shield, but if I find another sword, like... I'm not giving her this, but... Uh, any 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 longsword would do. I should actually pick some up off some some dead enemies, I guess. All right, let's keep exploring. Floor, what are we at? Nine, something like that. Oh, good. These sorts of enemies, like this, is what I mean. Like these are so much easier than the random encounters in Zental Keep. I don't think the OTUs could do anything to us, right? Like, they don't have any poison or paralyze. They're not worth very much experience.
Does this all link up, I assume? Might be another one of those rooms with loot in it. The room's floor is a mosaic forming a map of all moon sea. Lifelike statues pose on it like chess pieces. They're going to attack us, right? They're totally going to attack us. The chessboard of Marcus. You shudder at the host of dark knights, evil bishops, twisted mages, and myriads of grotesque pawns that radiate out from the elven court, touching Mulmaster, Zentil Keep, and Mithranor. Tall in the center is the grave image of Marcus, dressed as a Banite cleric, and beside him a proud mage queen, who looks amazingly like Shao. Yeah, I'm still not so sure about her, if she's gonna be uh, on our side or not after all. My, uh, sister, Petra. <laughs> She's totally going to betray us. Oh, look. It was a secret entrance all along. On the east wall, vines entwine a skull shrine. You see people coiled in the vines. Okay. Cut them down. Moander cultists have fed themselves to the vines. They shout in protest as you free them. <laughs> ah, typical. So I guess we should try to make sure we interrupt the cultists, because they can cast Blade Barrier, the mightiest of all spells. Not allowed to cast Blade Barrier, I said. Ah, oh, not quite far enough. Someone's gonna do something with that one up north. Fella, you got those boots of speed, right? So speedy. Alright, looks like we've probably interrupted everybody. Uh, Shal's just stabbing these trees with a dagger. As you do. Alright, we've got things under control. Just keep stabbing the tree. Surely it'll die eventually. I honestly don't see how a dagger would kill a tree in any kind of reasonable time frame. Even a longsword, you feel like you just kind of chip little tiny little wedges out. I guess we're talking magical longswords. I'm sure a magical sword can cut down a tree. What did I do there? Why did... Why didn't uh, Shinga attack? I don't know. Uh... Oh, long swords. We should give one of those to Shay. It'll do more than the dagger no matter what, so... It's actually not as highly... That's terrible. It's like a plus one long sword. All right, we need to find a better long sword. Congratulations, you got experience for saving the cultists and then killing them. Good job, team. Bunks. 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 So much bunk. There it is. That's the way up. All right, this will be floor uh, ten. Yeah. That's the way up. No, that's the way down. That's the way I just went. <laughs> I just went in a circle. <laughs> I'm a genius, everybody. That's the way up. That was a sneaky little hidey hole for it. The loft of wizards beyond the ark hear your voices. Wait. You overhear red wizards. Watch, Astrid. If he plans to attack me, knock on my door and say red. You surprised two of them. They didn't seem very surprised. But they're surprised now. Double backstab, yo! <laughs> uh, that's like the first time that's ever worked. And <laughs> Alright. 
Aha! Stand aside! The door is flung open and a coven of wizards pours out. They assault another coven. The magic blitz is awesome! In moments it is over. You inspect the wreck and... Treasure! This has been a pretty fun dungeon. <laughs> uh, Alright, detect and pick some of this up. We got a little bit of money. And... Some magic gear. A very bad dagger. Throw it back on the ground. Some darts and some mage scrolls. Okay. And some bonus experience. Which is always a fat. It's always bo It's always good when you get bonus experience for not even having to fight a fight. Oh, it's just a level 5 spell scroll. That's... Just throw it down. We don't want it. What about this? What does this do? Nobody wants power word blind. Get out of here. Just go. Nobody wants it. We don't like your kind around here. Um... I have some spells as well. I suppose I could save these for Rodica and Christiana so they can learn them a little bit earlier, but it's not a big deal. Same thing. If I ever need the inventory space, remind me to just throw those away. Alright, well, we managed to get the wizards to kill each other again. That's the second time. You enter a majestic loft! Black Circle Mages! Oh no! And one Dark Lord. Wonder what they were doing in the loft. Um... I guess I'm just gonna delay. I was thinking we might want to use some Smoking Clouds, but I think we're fine. They all interrupted, we're good. Oh, we could also, to help with the interruption, do this. Nice. Okay. Uh, detect magic. I could be worth it. Probably not that good. Yeah. I, I As much as I actually quite enjoy the, um, the gold box companion auto-identify, I just wish it would identify it before you picked it up. <laughs> I'm getting lazy in my age. No. We're going to give this to Shal. We're going to see if any of that's an improvement for her. So 1d4 plus 5. It's actually... So she had a dagger plus 4. Whatever. Now she's got a long sword. And her armor class is negative 8. So she actually has... She joins with a dagger plus 4 and a plate plus 4. That's pretty good. The helm and shield are an improvement at least. Oh, I was going to... I forgot to equip that. Good job, Blue. Black Circle Mages sleep. Kill them! I assume we get like a... Uh, a free attack round, maybe? Maybe could have backstabbed, but it's fine. Alright. Quick kill. Kill and move on. We're if I have to fight every one of these rooms... It's probably not worth it, is it? Clerics bathe! With huge monsters? I don't understand it. That's the one. Bella, or Shinga, you got this, right? Oops. 
Oops. Uh, move a little bit up. Uh, we ran out of readied arrows. That's what that was. Was confused there for a second. All right, all casters interrupted. Alright, fella, you have to take a hit. You don't even need to take a hit. What am I talking about? You're way too strong. All this crazy armor class, right? Job's done again. So, we got some bonus experience for that. I'm not sure why. The clerics did leave a few things behind, though. That's always good. So, there could be some more uh, unique loot. Boots! I like boots! I've never seen the pair of magic boots I didn't like. So we got boots of speed. Yes! We've got three boots of speeds, yo. Ah, uh, all right. That is some good stuff. So if I look at everyone's fully decked out armor class, boots of speed should be plus two. So I guess they go to Christiana next. Although, actually, no. I'm going to give them to Rodica, uh, specifically because uh, backstabbing, right? Being able to move a lot of extra squares could be useful for that. Nice. Those are really good. That's a really good find. Uh, the mace, not so much. Uh, the clerical scrolls, yeah, it's fine, but I'm not going to bother with them. The ring mail is just getting in my way. I'll keep that long sword for now. Quarter staff is not good enough. The staff sling is not good enough. Honestly, the darts just get getting in the way. So we really only got one thing, and it was the boots. So now... Uh, Rodica will have double movements, basically. And, uh, although I'm not sure exactly what it means, uh, if you look at Rodica now, she will also have magical boots. So I'm not sure if that makes any effect other than movement, but, uh... And also plus two armor class. Yeah! That actually puts her in the lead for AC. Well, I might have to rearrange some stuff after that. Um... That's the benefit, right, because the boot armor class is not fighting with your armor or the cloak of displacement or anything. It's all working together friendlyly. I guess, honestly, bracers of AC2, I have that. That would be one better. Uh, we have a ring of protection plus four and a helm plus four. So we could go one, two, three, four points better at this point. So we could get to armor class negative 21 if I stacked all the best stuff on one person. That's crazy. AC negative 21. I don't think I've ever seen it go below negative teens. Like, I'm, I don't think I've ever seen it to negative 20 before. Cool. Alright, let's keep moving. That was, that was really lucky. I like that. I'm glad I explored. Alerted by battle, the black circle or what's left of it has formed. Oh, is this like all the rooms that I didn't kill? Maybe? I don't know, maybe there's a story to this and I don't know what's going on. But it's also been a while since we've done a fireball, so it's time for that. Oops, that was not the spell I meant to cast, sorry. Trying to click quickly here, you know. We could also use Meteor Swarm. We should totally use Meteor Swarm, I never do that. They're all going to be dead by the time... Yeah, I was hoping Meteor Swarm would go first. This will probably kill half of them, but... Or not. Or not. They had some good saving throws, like, basically. Alright, Meteor Swarm time. This looks like a good spot for a Meteor Swarm.
It's hard to calculate exactly how much damage this manages to pull off, but it does add up, you know. Unfortunately, the Meteor Swarm doesn't really uh, scale. Like, it doesn't get better as you level up, unfortunately. Backstab? Miss! Oh man, you wasted that awesome backstab opportunity. Alright, good little fight there. I'm always happy to use some Meteor Swarms. And some bonus experience. Okay, so does that mean... Oh good, a closet. We could rest again. Um, does that mean all these rooms are empty now? Yeah. I bet you that was it. I don't know if it actually would have worked, but theoretically... No. You know what? You guys can sleep. If you're that lazy, you can live. That's how blue rewards uh, incompetence. So there's two ways up on this floor. There might be two sections to this next map, then. Uh-oh, what was that? I didn't even read it. Worried by conjury, mages of the Black Circle sprawl on the floor. Wearied. Behind them, great shambling shapes stand motionless. I guess we could listen for a second. Oh, it didn't really do anything. I guess they woke up. Time to put them down. Honestly, Bits of Moander are not nearly as bad as Pet of Callistes. I don't think the Bits have any magic at all, so all they can do is not die quickly. And that's not a very good advantage. I think we said they were immune to Lightning Bolt and Fire, so Cone of Cold is the only way to really magically damage them. But it works pretty Maybe they've got some magic resistance after all. Unless I cast that spell really wrong. Interesting. Alright, more bonus experience. The Black Mages escaped. Ah. But they returned with more allies. Alright, alright. That's how you want to play it. You want to bring your allies into this. Let's go stinking cloud them. No magic for you. No living for you. No magic, I said. Pretty sure I was clear on that. I guess the Earth Elementals must be immune to, uh... Um, Smoking Cloud as well. It's not that unreasonable, though. Pretty much- oh, even the Earth Elementals are surrendering. That's a bad sign. <laughs> when the creatures of dirt are- can tell that the fight is not gonna work out. <laughs> You're not long for this world. Alright, so this just takes us to the other engine. Okay, good. So both of the, the staircases to this floor link up pretty easily. That's- that's convenient for mapping. 
The Manufactory of Moander. A huge diagram sprawls over the center of this room. A line of Moander's beast trudges endlessly around it. No, they, that's enough of that. I don't know what they're constructing, but I'll have none of it. None of it, I say. Oops, I actually meant to cast magic. Alright, Rodica, you cast magic. Ah, uh, Cone of Cold, yeah. There's a little mini Moander bit there now. Not the worst, not the best. Oh, right, switch to the bow already. Oops, that... I didn't notice that guy. <laughs> Alright, another fight done. So that's the manufactory dealt with, I guess. You enter the Temple of Transformation. Oh. Are we transformed? This has been a longer tower than I expected. Ah, uh, 56. Beyond the arches, evil groups huddle in rapt contemplation of something to the north. This must be what Shal called the Temple of Transformation, where bits of Moander's body are cleaved away and spill from the vessel of Moander. Devotees of Moander and Bane await their portion. Lost in their worship, no one seems to notice you. This seems important. Let's go... Let's, uh, finish exploring the rest of this area first. Oh, that just... Same door. Okay. Who's that? Sorry, I, I know I missed a couple of these just because they... So we, we, in the south... In the southeast, it was the manufactory, so we dealt with that. What's on the... Westerns? Nothing? What's over here? Is there anything over here? Spectral servants? The exalted High Lord Marcus is not here, nor Lady Petra. He is gone, I deem, to urge the manufactory of Moander to triple its output. Who may I say called? Uh... Callistes called. Callistes? He lifts an eyebrow. I must ask you to leave. You know what? I've had enough of this. Hordes of Chaos Hounds rip at your heels. Really? Wait, what? You slam the door on the howling dogs. Well, that was different. My dear Callistes, the exalted High Lord Marcus is not here. <laughs> I wonder if you can change it to something that would actually work. So it already knows that Marcus and Petra... Maybe shall? Okay. I mean, it keeps track of your name. I wonder what the secret... There must be some sort of password. Um, Bane is here. Okay, you know what? I'm tired of this game. Let's just look it up. We're on floor, uh, which one looks about right? Um, just looking at the maps. Floor 10 or 11, probably? This is probably 11, I guess. Yeah. I guess we might be nearly at the top. Yeah, because uh, 10 had all those bunk beds over here. Alright, so floor 11, we're at event 18. Um, which is right here. Chambers of Marcus. Oh. A spectral servant will inform the party of the whereabouts of Marcus. But he won't show up for a while. 
Okay, okay, I don't want to spoil anything else. You're supposed to use this to find out where Marcus is, not pass a password check. And we just need to... We need to disrupt his operations some more before that will happen. Okay, that's fine. Red wizards sculpt pieces of the dead god into walking disasters. Aha! Worthy tests! Yeah, well... Alright, red, wi red wizards interrupted. That's all I needed. Now finish them. Oh, the red... The red shambling bits of Miranda, or whatever they're called. Um, it has some sort of status effect on attack. So someone will need to be affected by that before we know what it is. It could be poison, it could be paralyzed, could be blind, could be... Disintegrate. We'll hope that it's not disintegrate. I love these boots of speed. So good. Ah, you're fine. Alright, no more whatever you guys were trying to do. Congratulations, the party earned some experience. I didn't actually mean to search there, but that's fine. Is there anything in the corner? No. Let me guess, closet? Yeah, you know it. Okay, well, Temple of Transformation. I haven't saved in a while, so let's just, just in case something terrible happens. We haven't had to do a lot of reloads this game, though, so I'm happy about that. You step warily among evil groups wrapped in their foul worship. Do we just kill them? You stand in sick awe before the vessel of Moander. Walk right up to the foul beast itself. The temple's altar is a great bowl of stone suspended in the air alongside the tower. It currently overflows with a sickly green fluid, the life juice of Moander. Sprouts and gutters around the bowl catch some of the oily ichor and funnel it down to the tower's dark fountains. The rest spills out into the air and settles as a foul haze upon the elven court far below. The vessel seems to be moving slightly. But then you realize that it is fixed in the air. It is the tower which sways in the chill breeze. That's kind of crazy. So there's a floating dead god above a ta giant tower? Yeah, that's, that's a bit strange for sure. A vile flood stops anyone from entering its eldritch orifice. Nobody wants to enter that orifice. Don't even talk about it. All right. <laughs> Christiana. Why is there a cat in this room, and why did you step on its tail? <laughs> That's... They put all the comic writing into this dungeon. <laughs> why was the cat... Oh, man. Let's uh, make sure these mages aren't. There's gonna be a lot of mages in here, right? Let's uh, let's let's fireball them. This guy's had a pretty bad time. <laughs> Not as bad as the cat, probably. <laughs> I can't believe you stepped on a cat. Oops. All 
All right. <laughs> a chance to escape. Hurt. Shall murmurs a secret. Oh, she did take some damage there. I'll have to heal her back up. Almost didn't notice. The woman with Marcus is not my sister. She is me. A part of me. My evil side. Marcus used his cleaving magic to make me into two beings, one of whom would agree to do his will. He calls her Petra. So, do you see why I must be brought to her? Only I can bring her, my, powers back to the aid of Flan. And even if I should die along the way, reunion with her could make me live again. Oh. That's odd. She must live to reunite with Petra. Her other half. So we should keep her alive is what you're saying? Are you trying to tell me to heal her video game? Because... I can do that. I can. It doesn't mean I want to. My precious healing magic. Alright, so... Hopefully we've disrupted them enough... That now, when we go into this room... This room... This room here... My dear Bane, <laughs> the exalted High Lord Marcus is not here, nor Lady Petra. He has gone, I deem, to help the manufactory set its defenses. Uh, your mum called. All right, let's leave. So the manufactory was just the stuff on the right corner, right? Oops, wrong way. So. They just... He didn't set up his defenses very well. Wasn't this the manufactory? Yeah. But he's not here. Oh, there's that one... Okay, there's one room we never went into. The Cult of Moander is gathered here. Apparently, I just forgot about this one. I didn't even see it on the map. Sometimes, you know, you got video game. Let's play or blindness, we'll just call it, right? I mean, I understand they've got fancy tridents, but it sure looks like pitchforks. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Oh, you know what? This will probably work. You're not allowed to cast magic. There you go. Now that actually makes it so any of our characters adjacent to the one silenced can't cast magic either, but, you know. We don't need magic. Alright, alright. I thought I did a slightly better job. It looks like as long as you can get out of the way of those uh, blade barriers, though, they won't deal any damage. Like, you have one round to escape, basically. I feel like, um... The cool thing, though, is the, um... The, si the circle of... Or the... The silent spell basically works. Like... You, you could have used Fireball or Lightning, right? But, um, the, the, the Silent Spell seemed to do the job. Uh, we probably don't need any of this junk. The Flail might be unique, I don't know. No. I just figured we'd have a look. Alright. Frank- oh, come on, seriously, more? Aren't you tired of dying? I guess that's kind of the gimmick with Moander, right? He's already dead, and he just seems to be this gigantic dead god that has really sturdy bits of plant that you're just constantly fighting. And they don't really do much damage or anything, but they sure slow you down. Like, 
for this high of a level group, they don't really pose any real challenge, but they sure, like, I could see a battle where there was a big wall of them, and they would stop you from getting to the mages behind them or something. Like, they'd make a really good shield. Meat shield, basically. Except it's plant, so. Anyway, we got some experience. Hopefully that was the last sort of operation. Let's go check out this, uh, western... Um... This is the, uh, what are we, what are we calling it? The, um... The voicemail of Marcus? Oh, wait. Apparently, they don't want to talk anymore. They didn't like my Your Mama joke. Banshee? Oh, it's a Banshee! Ho oh, ho! Wait, wait, guys. Remember our, like, first adventure in after Bane destroyed the world? We better make sure we kill this Banshee, guys. Because, like, you know, I remember bad things. Also, that's pretty good. All right, Banshee be gone, please. There you go, no problem. <laughs> No whale of the Banshee killing everyone today. Now hidden foes burst. Whoa, what is this? Minion of Bane. Cool. I like it. New enemies, everybody. Alright, that means it's definitely time to throw some magic. Do it. Oh, it won't even work on the, uh, the Moander bit. And it won't work on the red Minions of Bane, either. Good to know. Alright, let's try... Stinking Cloud. No magic. Say, no magic's for you. But then I want to try out... You'll note I don't have any of the spell I want to try out. Okay, well, Ice Storm clearly works on them, and my allies. This is the Shambling Mound thing again, no big deal. Oh good, they breathe fire! Oh, you know what? This is this is definitely an enemy I've seen before. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot. So if we go into our Adventurer's Journal, this is the Red M Bale Minion, Bane Minion, I forgot about this. So three attacks, Fire Breath, Flame Touch. They can breathe fire like a red dragon. That's a little scary. Although it didn't do a giant fireball. Each hit by a red minion will cause an additional 2d6 fire damage. I bet you that's what the flame touch spell does as well. Interesting. Immune to a bunch of stuff. Probably fire as well. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, they're pretty tough. Thacko of 9 isn't that amazing though. Like... Just, just, just the, do the math here. Say we've got negative 15 AC, they would need to roll, uh, to hit 0, they need to roll a 9 out of 20. To hit negative 15, they need to roll a 24. So, how are they going to do that, huh? It's a 20-sided dice. You answer that, and then you'll tell me how they hit you. I just don't want... I don't want the mages doing anything. I don't think the minions of Bane are going to be that dangerous. They, they die pretty quick. They go down quicker than the, uh, the Moander bits. Okay, now you know what their special effect is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ronka. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. You know, with their probably terrible Thacko. But a back attack is like plus four or something, or some sort of number like that. Um, what, what we could do, maybe, because there might be another battle right after this. Let's try to uh, neutralize that poison. Wait, you can't? I thought we used to be able to cast this in battle. Alright, well, that's the end of that. Uh, that's just the garbage from the cleric, or the... Whatever you call the guys, you know. 
Now, minions, come on, we didn't let me revive. How rude. Doesn't even let me read the dialogue. And doesn't let me, you know, neutralize poison or anything. There should be less of these, um, old camp only spells for, for, for neutralized poison and resurrection and all that. It's just, I don't know. It's annoying, right? Especially when they chain all these battles together, like... I guess if I'd known that the bits of Moander had a poison attack, if I'd remembered, I probably would have not given them that back attack. I was trying to interrupt the other caster, was the thing. I thought it was more important. Speedy boots? Still, not too difficult to fight. And now that I know they have poison attack, I'll be a little bit carefuler, that's all. Alright. Battle number three completed. No worries. I don't care. Shell calls. Petra, I am here. Petra does not answer, but Marcus does. No! Keep that witch away! Marcus, we're never allowed to read what Marcus wants to say. So this could be a blue minion of Bane, and I'm a little bit worried about these guys. So let's just pop back over to our um, guide here. The blue minions of Bane, actually slightly weaker in terms of Thacko and movement. Uh, but they got Lightning Breath, which is always a bit of a problem. But the main thing that I'm worried about is... They radiate electricity, so anyone who strikes them takes double damage in return. They've got like a fire shield. Except it's lightning, so you can't protect against it. So, against these guys, I'm going to test it out. But we probably want to kill them with ranged weapons. Or magic. There's two of them. Oh look, it's Marcus! Gotta kill him as well. Alright, Shinga, you're gonna find out what happens when you strike a minion of Bane. I mean, yeah, like, it did a lot of damage, okay? I'm not going to make excuses. <laughs> it's, uh... It could have killed him. Especially if we had hasted him or something. <laughs> Alright. Holy, how did... How did my Cone of Cold go from here... Through this guy without hitting him, but kill the Bane minion behind him? Cones of Cold are just uh, ununderstandable. They are a mystery that I will never solve. Alright, Shell, go deal with Marcus. You'll be fine. <laughs> Energy Drain? They just lowered her level. I think she's probably a level 14 fighter now instead of whatever she was. Well, 15 instead of 14 instead of 15. Alright, that's it. We've had enough of this moment. Oh, he's got a uh, mirror image, I see. How many mirror images does he have? You're only supposed to get four. He blinked. Did he seriously blink on us? Okay, you only get four images, man. Stop it. Alright, he ran out of images. We should be fine. Weird. Well, that's the first time we fought a mage that came pre-spell buff. That's kind of cool. I wonder if he had like globe of protection, a globe of invulnerability, or anything on. He certainly had a like double charge or triple charge mirror image and blink. 
Um, we should look at the loot this time. Oh good, one piece of jewelry. We'll share it. <laughs> I wonder who got it. <laughs> hey, an elixir of youth! So anything here at the bottom could be good. The stuff that he was wearing could be good. So we should have a look at all that. Uh, not good. Oh, a ring of wizardry! Yes! I mean, I have a lot of rings lately, so I'm not sure how yes. But um, you might remember that I lost this during the transition. <laughs> Over the 10 year history course. I used to have one of these though, and it gave me a lot of extra spell slots at some specific level. Mace plus four, ring plus three. Hey, hey, AC is good. Um, that's garbage. That's garbage. That's garbage. That might be worth something. The mace is basically garbage. I've already got one. Hey. Hey, we got this. You know what I can do now? I can look this up in the editor and see why my cloaks aren't working properly. So I'm, I'm looking at it right now. In case you're curious, I can load this up for you guys. So if you're ever using Goldbox Companion to play with um, uh, items, you, you've got you know, your inventory over here, right? So we just picked up a cloak of displacement on, I guess, a pixel. So this is the one that I made for him. Um, the type number is kind of important because that's the ID number of the item. That's what tells the game that this is a cloak and not a long sword. Uh, so like a, a scimitar is number 13 and that gives it the damage property and all that of a, of a scimitar and you can equip it to a hand slot. So you gotta make sure you got your, your type right. The bonus is like your plus two modifier and the only way I could add AC was to do that. Uh, and then the properties here, 89, 128 is what adds displaced, which is one of the effects. And you can see that, um, you can see the list of effects here. Actually, you can't, because <laughs> I'm mousing over it. It's a drop-down menu. But um, anyway, the, the ID number beside the, the effect is the ID, and that's how you know that that's working. I don't know why you need 128. I'm assuming that's like some sort of duration type effect. And this is like permanent duration, I assume. So that if you wanted a temporary duration, you give it like 89 and six turns or something like that, I think. It could also be charges, like one of these properties could be the number of uses. So if we had a wand of fireballs, I could have checked if it had uses. Anyway, um, you can see like ring of invisibility. That's its ring type. It gives you apparently plus one save. I didn't know that. That's cool. And uh, 56, 128 is the invisible effect. So that's cool. Anyway, Cloak of Displacement. So it's got a completely different ID number, which is interesting. Because I'm pretty sure 45 is supposed to be Cloak. At least for Cloak of Protection. And it has the same property value and it says only one armor I'm, I thought cloaks were supposed to give you plus two AC on the cloak of displacement huh anyway that's that's you know that's what I tried to figure out on my own so um now the difference is like when I was trying to code it in or not code it in I was having a really hard time making the cloak take actual effect it is but this is how a normal cloak of displacement should work and see, in I think this is, oh, you can't see, exactly. Good job, Blue. Um, so what I was testing was unequipping this. See, I think there's something wrong with Pools of Darkness. I think they tweaked something because Cloak of Displacement is supposed to work with magical armor. I looked it up. Um, rings of Protection, uh, Cloaks of Protection, anything that's of protection in first edition is supposed to stop it's supposed to not work with a armor, uh, but bracers would work with this, and technically, like, uh, the boots of speed work with your armor as well. So it's weird that a Cloak of Displacement, which used to work in the other three gold box games, um, now no longer works, because I'm sure if you look back at the, uh, the Curse of the Azure Bonds or the Secret of the Silver Blades videos, I know we had a couple uh, Cloak of Displacements, and they, they did, like, real ones from in-game. 
And they did work with, uh... Um... They did work with the, uh... What am I trying to say? Um... The, the armor. They, they gave you the, the 2 AC. So anyway, I'll, I'll play with that more in between episodes, see if I can figure out exactly why the number isn't right. It's a really good piece of loot, but um, as it turns out, we actually already have four of them because we imported, right? You know, if you're fair. And um, we actually already have two Cloak of Protections that are much better. And... Or at least a little bit better. And now that we have Bracer's AC2... I could give that to Pixel and switch him to rings and cloaks as well. Um, maybe. But that way, like, because technically I have him as a half-elf, half, half elf, so he can cast magic as a uh, fighter mage. If I switch him back to a human and give him bracers, he'll be able to cast magic without any cheating. So that's kind of what I was hoping to do long term. Anyway, I know that took a long time talking about stuff. Um, that's fine. We got, we got some pretty good loot here. All right, good stuff. Let's wrap this up. Shall and Petra meet. And of course, it's a journal entry. The two women circle each other warily. A contest of wills seem to be taking place. Join me, one hisses. I hold the key to the power of a god. Join me, the other whispers. I have the strength to throw down the key. They circle each other again. Suddenly, one charges forward, deadly magic forming in her hands. The other throws down her weapon. They embrace. And suddenly there is one woman, a new light glancing from her eyes. Hurry, she calls. The overlord, Tanital, is preparing to leave his lair at Moander's core. He will come here in his in force. Flee to the vessel of Moander. Wait, what? That sounds like a terrible idea. The woman, now whole, bids you go to the temple without delay. And we get some experience. Okay, I think I know where the temple is. Let me, uh... We, we really need to eat, end the episode, but let's try to do this quick. Um, cast. Uh, neutralize. Po neutralize poison on Rodica. Wait. The game just crashed when I selected that spell. All right, well, we'll be ending the episode here after all. <laughs> it, that's twice Pools of Darkness has just straight up crashed on me. This is the far, by far the most in instable of the four games we've Let's Played. All right, well, I'll get to the same point as this. Uh, I can't remember where I last saved it, but I'll reload my game. I'll kill Marcus and reunite Shell. And then next episode, we can escape in a blaze of glory. And, of course, the game does this to me right right as we have to ex escape the exploding tower. Totally fair, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed and you don't mind my rambling. It's because we played with a cloak of displacement that caused the game to crash. We messed with powers that we shouldn't mess with. <laughs> All right, folks. See you next time.